that is fishy on the first coast and we're talking about something good this is a good thing two years ago we showed you the deliberate sinking of two boats about 28 miles off of Jacksonville's coast. So you might remember the goal is to create artificial reefs and Jessica Clark joins us now here in the studio with an update to see if they're doing the job that they were sunk to do. Sunk yes. to do and so in a word yes yes the boats are teeming with fish and corals including really big ones like that big fella he's an endangered species a Goliath grouper. We sank these vessels two years ago, so we wanted to go get an update and see what these boats look like. Joe Kistel creates artificial reefs off the first coast. Just last month, he and a colleague dived 90 feet to see if marine life had discovered their sunken ships. We're, we're seeing life as soon as we jumped in before we even went down, which was really cool. But and to see the life before you're actually down on the seafloor surrounding the vessel is just, yeah. yeah, it's a really gratifying feeling to see that. There were corals, which are key. And that type of growth is providing resources for the other fish to survive. And there were walls of fish. Uh, things like amberjack, Alm almaco jack, um, red snapper, quite a few of those. Good. And goliath grouper, which from a diver are really amazing to see. Goliath grouper. It's hard to see how big they are in this underwater footage, but they can weigh up to 800 pounds. And typically, Kistel will see one or two Goliath grouper on a reef, but. But in this site, we saw at least six that day. He's thinking. So I'm thinking this wreck is already serving as maybe a spawning site for these giant Goliath grouper, which is phenomenal because that fish was considered endangered. It still is, actually. And that camera shot two years ago, which captured the sinking of the ship and water rushing into the captain's wheelhouse. We we went back and I put the camera right where that same sink camera was now underwater. And while I'm doing that, this massive, the biggest glide cooper I've ever seen came right up and he kept coming and coming. And he came within two inches of the glass. It's probably several hundred pounds, massive, massive really? fish. Yeah, they're generally gentle giants. But when he's two inches from the camera and you're looking, you're kind of like, well, Maybe I should be a little cautious, but he just kind of swam away, but it was very neat to see. As homes for the tiny to the tremendous, this artificial reef, only two years old, is a success. And it's probably one of the more popular dive sites that the local charters do go to now. This vessel literally looked like a mature reef already. And artificial reefs have a couple of goals. One, to create more biodiverse habitats. Also, to provide recreational diving and fishing spots that are good for Florida's economy. Kistel says these sites check off both those boxes.